Stayallday.com. Now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. What is that? That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things. Excuse me, waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unified philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is the discomfort of leveling up. Let's talk about it. But before we do, let me tell everybody, I send out a text message every single day, free of charge. This message is guaranteed to have you focused, sharp, and on point to start your day. I even gave it a name because I am so sure, I so much guarantee the efficacy of this message. It's called the daily motivation. You should, you want to get this message. I'm not even asking you. I'm telling you. And here's what you got to do to get it. Text me at my number, 305-384-6894. Every day when that message goes out, because you are a member of my text messaging community, you'll be receiving that message straight to your phone free of charge. All you got to do is text me right now and it's done. I will take care of everything from there. You'll get that message every day. You can even respond to a message that I send out. You might get a response back to me because I do read the replies that I get and I do respond to some of the messages every day. So text me at that number. It's down below in the description. You'll be getting my daily motivation. Here's other piece of news you need to know before we get into today's topic, which is coaching. Dre, do you offer any kind of coaching? Is there a way that I can work with you directly? Is there any way that I can talk to you on a regular basis and just tell you what I got going on, just share with you, you know, where I'm at and get some feedback and some help with you on, on those things? The answer is yes, but here's the caveat. There's only one place that it happens. I'm not in 30 different places. I'm in one place. The one place is work on your game university. That is where I do all my coaching. That's where all my high level trainings, all my frameworks, all my courses, all of us in one place. The way you can get access and find out what's going on and what your choices are, are to go to work on your game university.com. That link is also, guess where? Down below in the description. All that said, let's get into this topic, which is the discomfort of leveling up. Now, this show, the whole show itself, is called Work on Your Game, which means what? What does that mean? What assumption can we make? based on a show that is called Work On Your Game. It means I'm assuming that the material that I'm putting out is for people who are serious about improving in some way. Hopefully you're trying to improve in many ways, not just one, but many ways. So today I'm gonna to preface you on the difficulties and the challenges that come with stepping up your game in any area. You wanna step up your health game? You wanna make more money? You wanna get higher quality people around you? You wanna be a more trusted and uh, trusted and appreciated member of the team that you work for. You want your sports team to perform at a higher level and you want to be the reason for it. You play a solo sport and you just want to do better against all your other opponents. You want to be a better uh, husband, wife, uh, father, mother, uh, spouse, sibling. If you want to step your game up in any way, I'm going to tell you about the difficulties that are coming as soon as you make the decision to do so. Now, you may have already experienced some of these difficulties. That's OK. You need to be reminded of them because sometimes people start to think that because things are difficult, that means you're not supposed to be doing it. No, that means you are supposed to be doing it. I'm going to let you know these are normal. All right, these difficulties that you either are experiencing or will experience are normal and to be expected. They are not to be run away from. Now, you may not have experienced any of these because some of you have not stepped your game up yet. You're still on coast mode like we talked about in yesterday's episode. You're trying to live like the average person. If you're trying to live like the average person, and that's your goal. Get the hell out of here. The show is not for you. If you're trying to live like something other than the average person, keep listening. So I'm going to let you know about these before they happen. Point number one. Today's topic, once again, is discomfort of leveling up. Number one, when you level up, things will happen faster than you are used to them happening. Things will happen faster than you expect them to happen. Things will happen faster than you are comfortable with them happening. When you level up, this is what will occur. Things will be moving a little bit faster than you are comfortable with. And that's exactly what's supposed to happen. Do not break the momentum of things happening just because it's uncomfortable for you. Don't do that. As you step your game up and move forward, expect this. The challenge with this is, I see this every day. I see it more than once every day. People are extremely resistant to an increase in speed of outcome. You'd be surprised. You would think, right? Just logically, just thinking about this, you would think that most people want their outcomes to happen faster and they'd be happy when outcomes start happening faster, right? 
If you're trying to lose weight, you want to lose weight faster, not slower, right? If you're trying to make more money, you want to make more money now, not six months from now or six years from now, right? If you want things to get better, you want them to get better as soon as possible, not slowly and steadily, right? That's what you, if I asked that question to a lot of people, you would be really surprised. Some of you would be surprised. Some of you would not be surprised because frankly, some of you, I'm talking about you, but some of you would be surprised that if you ask that question to, let's say 50 people chosen at random, I would say about 60% of the answers of people say, no, I'm okay if things happen slow. About 60% of people would say that. I'm okay if things happen slowly. I'm okay with my results coming slow. They don't need to come fast. I'm good if it takes me a long time. I'm good if it takes me 40 years to make a million dollars rather than make a million dollars in a year. I'd rather make it, I'd rather it take me a longer time to get the outcome. You'd be surprised. You would think everybody just wants to have, have their success happen as quickly as possible, right? Because you would think most people understand the logic of the fact that you don't have unlimited time. So you're just saying you want things to happen slow. You're assuming that you have the time for things to happen slow. You would think that most people would think that, but you'd be wrong. That is not what most, how most, most people operate. Most people operate and they're okay with things happening slow. So when things start happening fast, they get uncomfortable, even if the things that are happening are things that they want. They get uncomfortable because the speed, is, the speed makes them nervous. They get anxious about the speed of the outcomes. Again, outcomes that they want. I'm not talking about outcomes that they don't want. These are things that they want. People are extremely resistant to an increase in speed. And again, you would expect the opposite, but you shouldn't expect it anymore. Now, while I understand that maybe this applies to you, and I just said that, let me be more clear and specific. You are good with things happening faster. Most of you, I would say you who listen to this show, now this is, y'all are not the average people. You're good with things happening faster when they're the things that you want, right? But see, the things that will support what you want, the other aspects that allow the things that you want to occur, those need to happen fast as well. So you can't pick and choose the increase in speeds that need to occur for you to step up your level. So let me break that down and make it more uh, graspable for everybody. So let's say that your goal is to make more money. Now, that's a simple one because everyone understands it. For you to make more money, here's the first thing that has to happen. You need to be making more offers to an audience or audiences of people who could possibly buy your stuff. See, more people had to buy it. So that means more people got to know about it. That means you got to have, depending on what you sell, you got to have more sales conversations and more sales engagements, meaning you need to be sending more people to your landing pages or to your funnels, or you need to be getting on more uh, sales calls, whether you're doing it on Zoom, you're doing it in person, you're getting on stages, whatever you're doing, you got to have more interactions with people who might buy your thing and letting them know that you have a thing that can be bought. You got to do more of that too. Now, see, that might be uncomfortable for you, but the money you're good with, you're good with making more money, right? You're good with making three times more money this month than you made last month, but are you good with doing the activities that will lead to you making three times more money? See, that's the part that makes, makes people uncomfortable. It's not the outcome. It's the things that lead to the outcome. You don't want to do that. All right, so now we got we to gotta step up how much you're spending in ads. Oh, you're uncomfortable spending more money on ads, but you're comfortable making more money because of those ads, right? Okay, so the chicken comes before the egg, mofo. All right, we got to do this one first before we get that one. All right, so we got to do this first if we're going to get the other thing. All right, so you're good with losing 35 pounds. But you're not good with waking up an hour earlier so you can go to the gym. OK, so we got a problem here. You see, is the things that support the thing that you want. You got to deal with the speed that that increases in speed as well. All right. So we can't pick and choose just the stuff that's comfortable for us. I just told you this in yesterday's episode. You can't pick and choose what parts are going to work when you want them to work. Now, you can pick and choose when you get to the point that you've actually created all the success you want. But if you ain't there yet, you, you can't pick and choose. You're not in this position. All right? As the saying goes, beggars can't be choosers. I'm not calling you a beggar, but you get the point. So let's say you're a track and field runner. You want to get faster. You want to get faster soon because there's a competition coming up in track and field, and you want to compete for a medal in that competition. Now, last race, you didn't come close to a medal, but now you think you got a chance. Okay. Now, while there are things we can do that can help make you faster, faster, it's also things you'll have to do in your training with your nutrition, with your sleep, with your rest and with your recovery that also need to happen to make you faster. See, it's not just let's get on the track and let me show you how to actually run faster. Yes, that's part of it. But we got to facilitate you running faster by doing all the other things that support that faster running. You see what I'm saying? So you'd be good with if I could help make you faster so you can win a medal at your next race. You, you're good with me telling you what to do so you can make more money in your business. Right. You want to make 10 times more money this year than you made last year. I can tell you exactly how to do it. You're comfortable with that part. OK, now here's other things we got to do in order for that to happen. 
All right. So, you know, what we got to do. First of all, you got you can't eat any more. Uh, no more cookies and ice cream. All right. That's out. Throw that out. No more candy. All right. No more donuts. All right. So one, two, three. No more of those. No more potato chips either. Let's so throw all those out. So you got We're going to go in your kitchen. If I find any of that, I'm taking it. and I'm throwing it in the trash. Or I'm taking it. and I'm taking it home. I'm going to eat it. All right, I ain't running track. You are. All right. Your sleep habits. All right. I need you to get eight and a half hours of sleep minimum every single night. So that means at a certain time, you got to put your phone down. No more scrolling Instagram and Facebook. That's done. Done. Over. Your rest habits. That means after your workouts, you can't be all walking around town and playing around. You got to be sitting down and stay off your feet so your legs can rest. You got to do that, too. Your recovery methods. After every workout, you're getting in an ice bath for 15 minutes. I know the ice is uncomfortable. I know you don't like sitting in the cold. Nobody likes sitting in the damn cold. You're going to do it anyway because your goal is to get faster and you want to do it quick. All right. These are all part of the deal. This is not a negotiation. Are you in or you out? That's what I'm saying to you. You want to make more money in your business? Okay. Then first of all, we're going to triple your ad spend. Whatever you spent on ads last month, we're going to spend three times that. Now, unless your number was zero, three times zero is still zero. We're going to get you to spend more money on ads. All right. Whatever you're spending, you're going to spend more. That's number one. Number two, how often are you reaching out to your audiences and letting them know that you have something or some things for sale? We're going to step up the, up the volume of those messages. And you don't want to feel like you're always pitching and selling to your audience. I don't give a damn what you don't want to feel like. All right. Good. Who here knows how to make the money? Me or you? Okay, I do. So you're going to do what I'm telling you to do. So your way got you to where you are. You want to make more money. You want to make 10 times more money. So clearly your way ain't the way to make that money. So we're not going to go off of what you're comfortable with. What you're comfortable with got you to where you were. Everybody got me? All right, so now we're going to do something different. All right, also what your offers here, what you're selling this for, we're going to raise the price of this offer. All right, we're going to triple the price of what you're selling right here. This price is too low. You're going to triple this price. And you're like, well, I don't think anybody in my audience is going to buy it. You're right. None of your, nobody in your audience is going to buy this. We need to build you a better audience of people with more money. So we're going to shun those people who cannot and would not pay triple this price. And we're going to go look for people who will pay it because there are people who will pay it. Do you agree? All right, great. That's what we're going to do. Now, are you comfortable with those changes? Now, see, so you're comfortable with the outcome. Are you comfortable with, are you comfortable with the process that will lead to the outcome? See, this is the question you really got to ask yourself. So if you want to make more money in business, I just gave you an example. Speed up your ad spend. Speed up how often you reach out to your audience. Be more aggressive with your marketing. Increase the prices of your services. All these need to pick up in velocity. All of them. Not just the thing that you want. The pieces that support the thing that you want have to happen too. See, at this point, people get resistant and start to push back. And then they want to add time to the situation and they want to hesitate on moving forward. This is the reason why many people don't move forward. Because the hesitation, hesitation kills. Hesitation will kill you or you will get killed when you hesitate because people who are moving with speed will just run over you. All right. And it'll be over. You'll get stampeded. You ever seen one of those videos I heard on news where back in the days, back before everything was digital, when like on uh, Black Friday, day after Thanksgiving, they have like people will be at Best Buy and Walmart to get the new flat screen TV and they bust down the doors and somebody would get trampled in the process of trying to get into the store. Nobody got trampled because they were too damn slow to beat the crowd. All right. They got ran over by the crowd and stomped out. I'm not saying that to be insensitive, but this is what happens. If you move too slow, the crowd runs over you. All right. And this is what happened to a lot of you right now. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is the discomfort of leveling up. Number two, your peers are moving at half your speed. So you feel awkward. This is what happens when you do level up. If and when you level up. What's going to happen is you're going to look around at your peers, the people you consider your equals, or at least you used to, or you probably still do. And you're going to notice that you are moving at twice the speed that they're moving and you feel awkward because nobody around you is living with the same energy that you're living with. Inertia, the inertia of how you used to be is pulling you backwards. You're looking back at what those people did, which is what you used to do. And you're wondering if maybe you're making a mistake because you don't see anybody who looks or is acting with your energy around you. It's just you. This is where the law of association comes in strongly. You become the average of the people you spend the most time with, right? So if you're hanging around people who are at the average level and you start to go to a higher level, it will feel awkward because you're doing things on a bigger scale and doing them faster than those people are. So you got two choices. One is you can get away from those people or get them away from you. That's one choice. Either get yourself out of the circle of those folks, whether you leave or they leave. So you can then create new associations with people who are playing the game at a higher level. That's one option. Second option is you can slow down your progress so you can have more in common with average people. 
the average people that you've been hanging around. You can slow down and just be more like the average folks. You got to you can do that. Ain't nothing wrong with doing that. Now, while this sounds silly, right, you'd be surprised at how many people choose option two. And most people will not come out and say verbally that they're choosing option two. I'm just going to be more average so I can be more like the average people around me. This is exactly what people do. They may not say it, but this is what they do. If you want to know what somebody truly believes, don't listen to what they say. Look at what they do. Don't watch their mouths. Watch their feet. They will show you what they really believe by their actions. How many of you have ever been around somebody who said one thing, but they did another? Of course, we all have. How many of you have ever said one thing and done another? Okay, so which one should we believe? What you said or what you did? Okay. So who are you hanging with? Look at your associations. Who are you hanging with? It's much easier to hang around average level people and feel normal or feel superior to them because you're a little bit better than them. It's much harder to hang around higher level people and know that you got to push yourself just to keep up to where they are. This is where the human ego comes into play as well. Challenge for many of you and the reason that you don't level up is because if you hang around people who are playing the game at a higher level than you, then you can't feel superior to them. And when you look at them, you're like, damn, I got to step my game. I got to step my game. Every time you come across one of them, see what they're doing or hear what they're saying, it reminds you that you need to step your game up and that you ain't really doing shit. All right? That's what happens when you hang around higher level people. You are constantly reminded that what you're doing ain't shit compared to what they're doing. And many of you cannot reconcile that. So you know what you do? You serve your ego by going back to hanging around the low-level average losers that you've been hanging around so that you can feel like you're somebody. And you just spend the rest of your life hanging with them because it makes you feel good. This is what happens when you prioritize feelings over outcomes. Over here, working your game, this is a performance and a results-based business. If you want to serve your feelings, this is the wrong place for you. And I just want to make sure everybody understands that. It's not that your feelings don't matter at all. It's just that they do not matter more than the performance and the results. Over here, our job is to help you do good, not to make you feel good. Doing good will make you feel good, but doing good is the priority. Any questions? Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is the discomfort that accompanies leveling up. Number three, you need to make leaps, not just take steps. If you're going to level up in your life, you got to leap. You can't walk there. You got to leap there. You got to take a jump. Everybody knows the difference between a leap and a step. Okay. If you want to step your level up, at some point, you got to make jumps in progress. What exactly does that mean? What does that mean, Dre? Jumps in progress. What does that mean? It means that you cannot baby step and gradually slow walk your way to the success that you claim to desire. You cannot slow walk your way to success. You got to jump to success. You can't walk there. You leap. At some point, and this, let me explain this on a more granular level. At some point, you got to make some wholesale changes. Not small changes, wholesale changes. Not the changes that you're comfortable with, wholesale changes. Not the changes that you can slowly, little bit by little bit, get to. Now, at some point, you got to put the whole thing in your mouth and eat the whole thing, not bite off a little crumb at a time. No, the whole thing. Uh, you can't eat like a mouse. Uh, you got to eat like a, any of you got a, a big dog. You give a dog uh, some food, the dog will eat the whole thing in one bite. You're like, damn. Dog ate the whole hamburger in one bite. It didn't take a, take a little piece of the hamburger. So you can't eat like a, a uh, what's the name of that little dog? I'm forgetting the name of it. <laughs> it's escaping me right now. Uh, any of you have a, a little small dog, like a little poodle or a, um, a Pomeranian. So you can't eat a burger like a Pomeranian. You got to eat a burger like a, a Mastodon. They'll just pick the whole burger up. Now you put the burger on a plate, you turn around and to put something in the trash, turn around, the burger's gone. What happened to the burger? He ate it. Uh, the whole thing's gone. He's not even chewing it anymore. He swallowed the whole thing. You need to eat like that. Those are the kind of jumps that you need to make in your life. At some point, you must make these jumps if you're going to level up. Doing it the small way, eating like a little mouse, uh, you're going to run out of time, folks. Uh, how many times have you heard me say this? If this is the first time hearing it, get used to it because you will hear me say this again. You will run out of time trying to small bite your way to success. It will take too long. I'm not saying the small bites don't matter at all. There are times you take small bites, but there are times you got to take a big jump. You cannot walk, slow walk your way to the big success that a bunch of you, the people that I talk to, once you talk about big time success, all right, the big success that you want, you can't slow walk your way there. You got to do something and not just what you're comfortable with. So wholesale changes in your behaviors, habits, a shift in your paradigms about how you see yourself and how you see the world around you. 
Again, I'm talking overnight changes. I'm not talking six months in work changes. I'm talking overnight changes. Like, okay, I'm changing this. This, this is done. I'm changing this completely. Give you some examples. I'm the type of individual who likes to make wholesale changes, if you couldn't tell. And I make wholesale changes in very short periods of time. So when I decided that I was going to be a plant-based eater, this is back about 10 years ago. And when I first started, it wasn't even plant-based. I don't even know if we were using that phrase. It was just vegan. So when I first got into you know, healthy eating, let's call it that, the first thing I did was go straight vegan. That means I was not eating any kind of animal products whatsoever. Nothing that comes from an animal. That means not only no meat, but also no fish and no cheese, no dairy, nothing dairy and no fish along with no meat. That's pretty much what vegan is. I made that change in one afternoon. Uh, that, that was not a 30 day changeover process. Let me slowly phase out the meat. No, fuck all that. I made that change in one day when I decided I was going to do it and I saw that I could do it and I had the resources to do it. I made that change that day. If I decide to stop eating a certain food, I will throw all that food in the garbage or if it's packaged, I will take it back to the grocery store. Then I decided to change the way I was eating. I decided to eat, stop eating so much, so much processed food. I had just went to Publix the grocery store down here in South Florida. I just went to Publix the day before and bought a bunch of groceries. I bagged all those groceries back up, put them in my trunk, and drove back to the grocery store and returned all of that stuff back to the store. I had a gift card for like $45 from the grocery store because that's what I just spent the day before. That was a wholesale change. Any change that I make, I like to make the change immediately. I like to do it wholesale. Now, many people are not like this. You prefer to do things slowly and gradually. Here's the problem with slow and gradual change. Or your time will run out while you're still making the change. Your time will run out while you are still making the change. Let me ask you a question. Do you know or know of anyone who ever died before the age that you are right now? Question. Was that person expecting to die? Most of the people in this audience are under the age of, I have people of all different ages listening to the show, but most of you are under the age of 50. Most of you are under age 50. Do you know anyone who died at the age that you are right now or before the age that you are right now? And was that person expecting to die? Was the doctor telling them this is it? They were in hospice and they died. They were 35. Uh, did any of you know anybody who died and they knew they were going to die at that age? Now, many of you know someone who died, but they weren't expecting to die. They didn't know that was their death. So you, how arrogant do you have to be to think you just have time? Oh, I'm only 40. I got time. I'm only 27. I got time. I'm only 19. I got time. You do? How you know? Show me the documentation you have from your higher being that says you have this much time to get to what you want to get to. Show me where, show me where that's guaranteed to you. So every minute that you take saying that you have time and slow walking and taking your time getting the stuff, that is your arrogance talking, telling you you can take your time getting to an outcome as if you know how much time you got. I don't know a single human being on this planet who knows how much time they have. Unless you happen to have a terminal illness and the doctor says you're going to die and you accept it or you're going to commit suicide. So, you know, you got two days left because you're going to do it in two days. Other than that, I don't know a single person who knows exactly how much time they got left. So who would... The hell do you think you are to say that you got time? No, you don't. You don't have time. Time is a scarce resource. You cannot take your time making changes that will help you get to your desired success. You cannot take your time. So when you hear the phrase take your time, that doesn't mean move slow. That means take the time and do something with it. That's what the phrase means. It doesn't mean take your time does not mean go slow and be steady and cautious about what you're doing. All right. You remember the story of the tortoise and the hare, right? All right, if that was a real life story, then that wouldn't even been a race. It wouldn't even be a story. All right, a rabbit against a turtle in a foot race? All right, that's not even a serious question. In a fairy tale, the turtle wins. All right, in real life, all right, it's not even a competition. Most, many of you are living your life as if you believe that fairy tale to be real. I'm letting you know. It's some bullshit. Turtle is not beating a rabbit in a race. Rabbit moves quickly. The turtle is too slow. Time is a scarce resource. You cannot take your time making changes that will help you get to your desired success. Your success is racing against the clock. Your success and the clock are in a race against each other. All right, they're not on the same team. All right, they, are op they are opposing each other. Always remember this. Many of you seem to forget it at convenient times when your comfort is challenged. You need to be challenging your comfort. Don't avoid this. You need to go towards it. And all that said, let's recap today's class, which is the discomfort of leveling up. 
Again, the show is called Work On Your Game. My material is based on the assumption that you want to level up, so I'm telling you what to expect. Number one, things will happen faster than you're used to. All right, do not push back when things happen faster than you're used to. Be happy when they happen faster than you're used to. And again, this is not just the stuff that you want. It's the stuff that supports the stuff that you want. Those things are going to happen faster too, and you must not resist this when it happens because this is the key to you actually getting what you want. You must accept and embrace the fact that things are going to start happening quicker than you want them to. Number two, your peers are moving at half your speed, so you're going to feel awkward. Here's an easy fix for that. Get the hell away from those average people that you've been spending your whole life around. Get around some other higher level people whose presence, their very presence, pushes, pushes you to do more than what you're doing up to this point. And number three, You need to make leaps, not just take steps. If you want to step your level up, at some point you need to make jumps in progress, wholesale changes like today. Not over the course of six months, not over the course of 30 days, not what you're comfortable with, not what you have grown accustomed to. All of those things you're comfortable with and you've grown accustomed to are the reason why you're at the point where you need to level up. So don't keep doing the same things and expecting a different result. That's the definition of insanity. All that said, text me. Let me know you want to get the daily motivation message I send out every day for free. My number is 305-384-6894. And work on your game university. What you heard here today sounds good. This sounds like if I sound like the type of person you would want to do business with, I sound like the type of person who could help you get to where you want to go and you know there's somewhere you want to go that you ain't at yet, go to workonyourgameuniversity.com and stop acting as if you have forever to get to your outcomes. No, you do not. Workonyourgameuniversity.com. Work on your game. Dre, all day.